experience feeding tapirs. Not a bad our tapirs. Uh, yeah. But before you go and say hello to our tapirs, yeah. I'm going to go through yeah, the boring health and safety stuff. Is that all right? Yeah. So, this tapir experience, you will not get to touch the tapirs. Is that okay? Yeah. Because tapirs have very, very sharp teeth and they can bite. So what you're going to do is you're going to yeah. feed them from a really high platform and there you're going to be looking down below, okay? Okay. Now, to get up to the platform, we've got to take six little steps, okay? okay? And in this weather, it should be nice and dry so it's not slippy. But to get to the steps, we've got to go over some bumpy floor. So what I want you to do is when we go through the gate, is just make sure you're checking where you're walking to make sure we don't fall over. Is that all right? Yeah. Awesome. And... We are going to be feeding them their favourite food, which is leaves. But I saw I somebody come with some leaves earlier. Ah, they might be the right same leaves. But yeah. what I want you to do is, when once you've fed our tapirs, you make sure that your hands don't go near your face. Is that okay? Yeah. Because after the experience, uh, our keeper Debbie will ask you to go and wash your hands in the toilets with soap. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to wait here until Debbie comes for us. Hello. This is Debbie. Hello. Debbie's going to be nice delivering to your tapir experience. So this is Adam and this is Cassie. Hello. Let's go and chew up. So I'm going to leave you in Debbie's capable hands and remember, after your experience, wash your hands. Wash your hands. Awesome. So we've got two Is it C A S S I E? Yeah. Uh, there you go, they're for afterwards. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Have an awesome time. Thanks. I can see they're here and they're ready for you. Yeah, one's already eating some. I'm going to pop these down here. They're nice and clean. Okay, so we're going to give them some brows. Do you want to pick a piece up? Yeah. So this is goat willow that they're getting. Okay. Uh, a bit of hazel. You want to follow me up some steps? Okay, if you want to go in and I can come round you this side. So what you're going to do, you can hold it over like this, give it a nice big grip because they're very strong animals. So they will stand up on this log, see how this is Inca, so she's just grabbing some okay. here, but they will tug on it quite, quite hard. So. Um, just make sure you hold on to your branch quite hard, all right? I heard okay. that Inca's just had a birthday. Yeah, she she's just turned 21, wow. so she's our oldest tapir in the paddock. Um, she lives with, this one is Fifi. So Fifi is nearly 13 years old, but Inca's been here since she was one. So she's lived here most of her life, uh, settled in quite nicely. So she's lived here 22 years? 20 years, yeah. So she's just turned 21, so she was here since she was one year old. How amazing is that? Really cool. So she's way, way older than you, isn't she? Yeah, because I'm only six and three quarters. And how long do they normally live for? So normally in captivity would be around 35 years. So she, she's sort of edging towards the, the older age now. But um, she's in perfect health. Um, we give her all the checks over that she needs, especially, you know, due, due to her age. So um, we regularly check our animals with the vet also just to make sure they're in tip-top condition. That's it, she might stand on this log now to get a bit closer. Yeah. Can you see their big feet? Yeah. Aww. So this is Fifi over here. She's actually a wild tapir. We had her from, she came from Brazil about four and a half years ago now. So. Um, she's also settled in nicely, but she prefers the hotter weather in this country compared to the colder weather. Uh, she's very used to it being hot, so she doesn't mind it being hot too much. Whereas, because Inca was born in captivity, she um, isn't quite used to it, the heat as much as what other animals might be. Um, so we give our animals lots of shade, so they've got a big giant water paddock as well. Uh, they, they are actually very good swimmers considering their size, they actually enjoy swimming quite a lot. They share it with our capybara over there, can you see the giant guinea pigs? Uh, they also uh, yeah. share the paddock with the tapirs and uh, are very good swimmers, they're all semi-aquatic animals so um, they need lots of... Come on, third place. Yeah, so tapirs enjoy having a good swim in the daytime too. They can just uh, So we alternate giving them the grass and the paddock also. 
and yeah, they, they kind of like do what they want in the daytime. They um, get fed, they eat lots of lots of browse that we cut down for them and enjoy life really. They're quite hardy animals as well, so they're not bothered by the winter. So when it rains or snows or it's cold, they just go inside. We just turn the heat lamp on for them and it's nice and warm inside for them. But they do like to come out in the snow sometimes also, so they, they are quite used to all weathers um, in this country. So we, we come across quite a lot, just like we do really. So can you see their nice big wiggly noses? Yeah. Can you see that they've got sort of almost like a trunk nose? Yeah. So that's just like a giant muscle and because it's wiggly it means it's prehensile so it means it can just be freely move around whereas your nose has got a bone in it so you can't freely move your nose. You have to move it with your hand. Yeah, but they can just move theirs on their own. They also use their noses as a snorkel in the water so they can breathe underwater. So they can take a big nice gasp and then they can go right underneath for two or three minutes and um, yeah, be able to swim underwater for a while. It's like I'm giving them a tree. It's like They've got nice big ears for camouflage as well. So their ears is one of their primary senses. They rely a lot on their hearing because their sight is actually quite poor. So they can't see too far in front of them, but they will listen, they can hear for lot, lots and lots of miles. So um, their, their sense of hearing is very, very good. And they've got nice big teeth that they can rip those leaves off and branches and, and eat lots and lots of root vegetables out the ground. So. That one's nearly pulling yeah. my arm off. So they're very strong, aren't they? Yeah. They're actually related to horses and rhinos. So their ancestors are from about 35 million years ago, these were on the earth. So they've been around for a very, very long time. Get a good shot of her. I have to go on my tippy toes to reach. Yeah. We just filled it nice and high just to make it safe for you, just so that, yeah. you know, if she was to pull really hard and pull you over, it would be very nice for you. Yeah. I already got my elbow licked. <laughs> to to the so Fifi's just going to have a wander off now. I think she'll probably go for a swim. So you can see the water paddock properly. If you go around by the goats, you can get a good look of that paddock around there. Be careful. We also do a bit of training with our animals. Can you see like the tennis balls with the sticks? Hanging? Yeah. So these are our target sticks. So we've got a clicker and we ask them to, we get to the fence and we ask them to touch the nose, uh, the ball with their noses even. Um, and they get a little click and a reward, which is just like a treat. So it's yeah. just that they want I, to I see that. Fed. It's because I see, I see that when I'm, um, when I watch um, a zoo program ah, and, yeah. and they, and they're training them in their cages yeah. and, they, and they have to. Um, use the target stick to move yeah. them around and they get a reward out. They have to That's try exactly and. Well, we built a bit of trust up with the animals, so you know they get to trust you and they're getting a treat out of it. But also, it gives them a bit of exercise and a bit of enrichment, so it's something different to do every day. Is the other they one coming? Are switched on, yeah. So she's just having a wander around. She um, she's a little bit more reserved than Inca is. Inca's quite used to sort of human contact and, and being around, but Fifi doesn't because she's come from the wild. She's a little bit less. A little yeah, because you don't people. really see them in the yeah. wild. So um, it took her a long time to build trust up with the keepers and so sometimes new people can just um, unsettle her a little bit. She'll just go off and do what she wants to So I've been here for about just over 10 years oh, now. Oh, wow. So yeah, I've worked with these guys for about seven years. Wow. Um, They're like your family. So yeah, I've been here since, since I was very young. That's awesome. Um, and not a day goes by that you don't enjoy your job. It's one of the best things in the world. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's stronger than me, Cassie. I couldn't hold on to my phone. <laughs> you have to pull against it. That's how you hold on. Fully prepared for their strength. We are very strong animals. Do you want us? We can't get it up. <laughs> Fifi's just got a mouthful. Yeah, she'll just try and munch all of that now, all in one. You can drop that down if you want yeah, to. Last one, I reckon. That's it. That's it. Cool. And we do lots of studies on our animals as well. So we're currently doing a sleep study on our tapirs at the moment to just to measure how much they rest and how much they sleep. 
it's good to sort of know that sort of information while animal in captivity is just so that you can try and compare it to the wild and try and if we need to change something um, or we don't need to change something then you know we need to have that evidence there to prove what you know our study is about so it's good to get lots and lots of data so we watch our animals every day maybe for about a half an hour to an hour different times of the day and um, we just measure what they're doing every day um, and that gives us a good idea of how much sleep they're getting or what activity they're getting we've also got a tracking collar for these as well so we can measure them at night time which we've just started doing it's quite a new thing we've recently started so we can actually follow them at night time now and sort of see how much activity they're getting up to at night time so yeah it's good to gauge whether they're getting as much of the natural um, behaviours as possible. Cool. Okay. Right. Almost done? Yeah? Cool. Enjoyed that? Yeah. Good. <laughs> Thank right, you. I'll show you down here and you can grab your certificate. Yeah, they're very steep steps, so be careful. So, Cassie. And Adam, Brilliant. there you go. Thank, Thank you ever so much for coming. It's nice to meet you. Mm -hmm. Maybe come back again one day. Thank you for watching.